Hello, welcome to this next tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to um, have a look at how to preserve, uh, preserve like a rigid detail on a on a garment. Now, many years ago, uh, when I first started, um, you know, I tried to do this, and I, I it couldn't make it work because I was modelling it as part of the garment. And if you model it as part of the garment, then what happens is um, it's subject to weight maps and it's subject to morph transformations and as soon as that um, you know those two kind of uh, factors come in you tend to get really big deformations on your um, on your you know hard detail but there is another option which I wish I'd known about at the time and that's the uh, the rigid follow node so what we're going to do is go through the the process of that and um, you know step by step get it uh, get it working. Okay, so I've got my uh, garment here and just in Blender uh, I've exported the dress and I've modelled this just very basic detail up on the on the neck. And what we're going to do is export that and bring it back into um, into Daz. So I've got it selected, so let me just go File and Export and Wavefront Object. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, and it's in the right place for a change. Uh, so I'm just going to export it to my uh, working bin directory there uh, with selected only, selection only rather, because uh, I don't want to export the dress, I just want that little detail there. And we'll click Export. And then in Daz Studio, uh, we can file and import, and then I can import that object. Um, I've exported it at Blender scale, so I need to import it at meter scale. Now this Blender unit equals 50 centimeters isn't correct anymore, I don't think. Uh, so I use this Modo one unit equals one meter, and then hit accept, and that brings our little prop in. To, to work and providing it's in the right place you know we're ready to go uh, so what we'll do in the next little section um, is I'm going to prep that prop so that it's uh, ready to be uh, ready to be used so I'll talk to you then okay so we want this to be a prop especially if you're going to distribute it because otherwise you'll have embedded geometry and you know that's a, a bit of a no-no so we want to prepare this and then save it as a prop so the only prep we need to do is to uh, center it or align the centers so what i want to do is actually i need to move that one out of the way so that i can grab the white the uh the green one and just move these to the center of our prop and then it's going to you know when it rotates it will rotate around those axes and you know that will help us it will uh, it, it's less likely to rotate randomly and do crazy things so once we've got that done with the uh, prop selected we're going to go file and save as wherever save as has gone and support asset figure prop asset now i have somewhere um, a directory runtime um, set up for this. Um, I might need to, I might need to do a video on how to do that. Actually, um, I'm not going to do it in this one, but I'll perhaps do another one. Um, and I've gone to the directory with the clothing, so I'm going to include it with the clothing, not as a like a separate prop. Uh, and I'm just going to call it detail, and then we'll save it. So it's me, it's whatever product name I give it. Uh, F G Party Dress. Uh, da, da, da. It's detail. I'm not worried about any of this sort of thing. Uh, that looks like the right runtime or asset directory up there. So I'll click accept. And when I open my runtime here, I've got people closing me there we go there it is and now I should be able to delete this and add it back okay so the scene detail now contains 
you know, a reference to a prop rather than embedded geometry. Okay, so that's the prep for the prop. The next thing we need to do is pre prepare the rigid follow node. So we'll do that in the next section. Okay, so the rigid follow node. What we need to do is first, I'm going to hide this because I need to see underneath the uh, the prop. And I'm going to switch over to wireframe shaded because this will help. So with the dress selected, what we need to do is go to the geometry editor, which is this wee button up here. And then I want to select a number of polygons behind the, the, uh, the detail. So if I just hide and unhide that, that means I'm, well, I'm going to select these four. Now this is a bit of a um, imprecise art because it will rather depend upon where the prop is, um, what geometry is available um, and you know how it behaves as to whether it's going to work or not. So you may need to do this a couple of times to say create one, try it, doesn't quite work then create another one add or delete the original create another one and with a different selection and try it again sometimes more polygons works better sometimes fewer polygons work better it's a yeah it's a bit of a judgment thing and something you'll get you know as you do it and do it and do it okay so with that selected i can right click here and uh, we should have somewhere down here a geometry assignment that's what I'm looking for and then down the bottom we've got create rigid follow node from selected there we go so I'll click on that and I'll call this detail actually I'll call it detail uh, node so it differentiates it from the detail prop and then click accept and that will create it under my dress a follow node now i find it best here to then parent this to um a part uh, the the part that is underlying in the dress so if i just select back to here again it's at neck one so let's just right click on that and change parent and then select neck one from the dress of course uh, it's down here somewhere neck one there we go then I'll hit accept okay so the last thing to do then is to parent the prop detail to the decal node and we can simply drag and drop that onto there and now if I switch back to uh, perhaps a shaded mode, we can see what's happened. So let's try it. Let's do a, a bit of a movement. So if I get onto my rotation thing here and right click and I want a Genesis neck one, there we go. And now when I move that around, you'll see that that doesn't deform. It just sticks to where it uh, should do don't know what's happening there i think i might be on a different piece now select neck one there we go <laughs> now i keep selecting the wrong things my fault okay let me just go back to my library and i'll find some poses and we'll put it through a few poses to see how it behaves uh, let's just do the base there we go Okay, so let me apply that one and then I'll go and have a look and zoom in. And as you can see, it's nice and, you know, it just, just works nicely. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how to explain it really. It hasn't deformed, it hasn't done anything crazy. You know, the you know the weight maps aren't affecting it. The, um, the Well, we'll test the morph data in a moment or two. Uh, but yes, in this case, the weight maps aren't affecting it and it's just working. Let's try that one. There we go. That looks good. Uh, can I find one with their head turned? That's a good question. 
Uh, possibly not. Oh, well, that's kind of bent, so that's not too bad. That uh, looks like it's doing the job. There we go. And let's try that one. There we go. Yes, so there you go, rigid follow nodes. So the last thing to test then is the morph uh, data. So let me just reset her with the shift control and F and then we'll slide up and apply a morph or two. So let me go to the shaping tab and actor and body and we'll try the base feminine. See, all that's happening is that this prop is sticking to those um, vertices or those polygons in the rigid follow node. So it's just moving with it, which is perfect, which is exactly what we want. So it works for uh, the, the base female, it works for Victoria, and uh, I suspect it will also work for the masculine. There we go. So uh, a few caveats, if I can. Depending upon where you want this, uh, rather depends upon how likely it is to work. If you wanted to put something here for some bizarre and inexplicable reason, something at the middle of that skirt, the likelihood of it working is, is slim. Um, because there's a lot of movement going on there in different directions. You've got uh, the legs, you know, pulling, you know, potentially two different ways or maybe even more ways. Um, and that's going to give it problems. Now, saying that, it won't deform. It's just that it will move out of place. So if someone does move out of place, you do always have the option, if you select the prop again, to uh, move it. So you can move it and rotate it around that center that you set to adjust it and put it where it needs to be. Um, obviously, you know, for me personally, uh, I would prefer it to prefer to put it in a place that minimizes that. Um, and yeah, that's that really. The other option you have is to select the, uh, the node because you can also rotate the node. So while it won't rotate the actual polygons, it will rotate what's attached to them. So that could be really helpful sometimes. Yeah, so you have the option to update the de decal or update the decal node. Uh, I'm not sure you could actually move the decal node. Uh, maybe you can, you can. Um, but yeah, you've got both options. I'm told that the, the best way to do it is via the decal node. I just wanted to show you that you, know, you have two options. You could do it from either. Okay, so that's adding a rigid detail to um, to a garment. I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions, let me know below and I will talk to you again soon.